chapter 16. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Want any more potatoes, Luke? Mother offered that night at supper. Luke? Her voice got more insistent. Luke? Luke jerked his attention back to his family. Mother was holding the bowl of mashed potatoes out to him. And uh, no, Luke said. No, thanks. I still got some. More for me, Mark crowd, crowed. Luke turned, or sorry, tuned them out again. He'd barely eaten his first serving of potatoes. He'd been so busy thinking about his secret visit to the sports family's house. He couldn't believe he dared to go. Just thought of that as run through their yard made his heart beat fast, remembering fear and pride. He'd really done it. And then meeting Jen was amazing. There was no other word for it. He was so overwhelmed with wonder at everything he'd seen at her house, everything she'd told him, that he started to say, Did you know that Jen... At the last minute, he clamped his teeth shut, holding in the words. He thought he'd burst. He could feel his face flush red with the effort of keeping still. He bent his head low over his plate so nobody would see. How could he ever manage to keep Jen a secret? But he had to, because if he told, they'd forbid him to go back. And he'd have to go back. We'll set up a signal, Jen had said. Something I can see. But you don't have vents like I do, Luke protested. You can't look out the windows. Oh, when the mirrors work, it's no problem. Look. She took him over to a window near the sliding glass door and showed him a mirror that reflected a wide view of the Talbot's backyard and the landscape beyond. It showed just the corner of the gardener's barn, but when Jen turned it a bit, the entire Garner house came into view. Luke wondered if his parents could set up the same kind of system. Then he looked at the mirror again and decided it might be expensive. And anyway, how could he explain where he got the idea? So let's see, Jen said. A signal. I got it. How about if I look out every morning at nine, and if you come over, you shine a flashlight at me. I'll shine one back if everything's safe. We don't have any flashlights, Luke said. Not at work, I mean. Jen frowned. Why not? We haven't had any batteries in, I don't know, four or five years, Luke explained. In fact, he felt proud even to remember what a flashlight was. Okay, okay, Jen said. No flashlight, no computer. Oh, we have a computer, Luke said. My parents do, and I think it still works, but it's in Dad's office in front of the house, and I'm not allowed in there. And anyhow, I'd never be allowed to touch the computer. He remembered once, when he was very young, maybe three or four, he had followed Mother into Dad's office while she was cleaning. The rows of letters on the computer keyboard had looked like a toy to him, and he'd reach one finger up and tap the space bar over and over again. Mother had turned around and freaked out. They can find you now, she screamed. If they were watching... And for weeks after that, she'd hidden him even more carefully than ever, locking him in his room when she had to go outside. That's scary. Don't tell me your family believes in the government propaganda stuff, she said. I have to stop. What's propaganda? Well, Stephen. Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah, propaganda is like trying to brainwash people. Remember that picture Stephen showed of the, like, the Jewish book and they made him look like Thieves made them have huge noses, made them, like making fun of them pretty much. So propaganda is like government control stuff. They spent so much money trying to convince people they can monitor all the TVs and computers. You know they couldn't have afforded it to actually do it. I've been using our computer since I was three and watching TV too. And they never caught me. How about a candle? What? It took Luke a minute to realize she was talking about the signal. The candles. They're all in the kitchen, and I'm not allowed. Jen mimicked the words as she said them. To go in there. They got you in an awful short leash, don't they? She asked. No, I mean, yes. But they're just trying to protect me. Jen shook her head. Yeah, I've heard that one. Ever hear of disobeying? I. Luke started defensively. I'm here, aren't I? Jen laughed. Got me. But listen. If you can't do candles or a flashlight, how about just turning on a light that I can see? 
Luke was quicker this time, figuring out that she was still talking about the signal. The one by the back door, Luke said. You can't miss it. He wasn't allowed to turn that on either, but he didn't dare say, not allowed again. Now Luke toyed with his mashed potatoes. His entire conversation with Jen had been like that. She mocked, he defended, but she always got her way. Of course, he defended her, her to himself. She knew that he had seen, or she had seen so much more than him. After he'd finished his story on the couch, she told him hers. First, she said defiantly, my parents had me on purpose 13 years ago. Mom already had Bull and Braun for her first marriage. Your brothers? Luke said, or Luke asked. Yeah, Bolton and Brownlee. Really, what kind of names are those for knuckleheads like them? Mom was going through some snobbish upper class phase with husband number one. She had more than one husband? Luke asked. He didn't know that was possible. Sure, Jin said. Dad, who's really my stepdad, is number three. Luke found that so confusing, he just kept his mouth shut. Anyhow, Jen said, Mom was dying to have a little girl, so when she had and husband number two got together, she went and paid some doctors lots of money so she could get pregnant. What if you'd been a boy? Luke asked. Oh, they got out or got in on the beginning of the gender selection experiment. Luke must have given, given Jen a particularly blank look because she explained it. That means they made sure I was a girl. Doctors can do that, you know. But the government outlawed the procedure because they were afraid to throw the population even more out of whack. I'm sure my parents paid a lot for it. Were your mom and dad trying for a girl? Luke thought about it. He remembered Mother saying she wanted four boys. But would she have wanted a girl even more? Someone like Mother? He couldn't really picture a girl in his house. They weren't trying for anything, he said. I was a surprise. Luck. Jen nodded. I didn't think they paid for you, she said. And then she put her hand over her mouth. That sounded really terrible, didn't it? I didn't mean anything by it. It's just you're the first person I've met who wasn't a baron. How do you know I'm not? Luke asked stiffly. Well... Jin waved her hand in a way that made Luke even more aware of the contrast between his ragged flannel shirt and patched jeans and Jin's perfect house. Look, don't be mad. doesn't matter. Or maybe it does. But I think it's cool that you're not a baron. You can help me even more. Help? Luke asked. With the rally, Jin said. She bit her lip. Should I? There's no way, no way you could be an infiltrator, is there? Can I trust you? Of course you can. Luke said. He felt insulted again. Jen leaned her head back and stared at the ceiling as if an answer were written there. And then she looked back at Luke. I'm sorry. I'm botching this. I'm not used to really talking, just on the net. Look, I trust you, but I'm not the only one involved. So let's wait, okay? Okay, Luke said, but he couldn't help sounding injured. G Jen leaned over and gave his shoulders a quick shake. Oh, don't say it like that. Say, okay, Jen, I respect your judgment. Or, okay, Jen, whatever you think's best. She giggled. That's what Dad tells me I should say when I disagree with him. Can you believe it? Lawyers. Luke was glad the subject had changed. Your dad's a lawyer? He asked. Jen rolled her eyes. Yeah, all mom's husbands have been strange taste, huh? Number one was an environmental lawyer, of all things. Number two was a corporate that's how they had enough money to get me. And number three, Dad, is with the government. High up, I might add. So the government's doing the same illegal stuff. But if you're an illegal, Luke hadn't thought he could get any more confused. Jen laughed. Haven't you learned government leaders are the worst ones for breaking laws? How do you think we got this house? How do you think I got internet access? How do you think we live? I don't know. Luke said, fully honest. I don't think I know much of anything. Jen patted his head as if he were a little kid or a dog. That's okay, she said. You'll learn. It wasn't long after that that Luke said he had to leave because he was afraid Dad or Matthew or Mark might be coming for lunch a little early. He dreaded the trip back. 
Jen walked him to the door, chattering the whole way. I'll fix the screen and deal with the security system so no one will ever know you were here, she said. And, oh, no. Luke followed her gaze. She's staring at the three po points of blood, uh, three pinpoints of blood on the carpet. I'm sorry, Luke said. That must have been from when I scraped my hand. I'll clean it up. There's still time. Secretly, he was glad for the delay. No, no, Jen said impatiently. I don't care about the carpet. It's just the mom and dad will know. And when they see, I don't have any cuts. And then, before Luke even knew what she was doing, she thrust her hand toward the torn part of the screen. The jagged edge didn't cut immediately, so she held the screen with her right hand and raked it across her left. When Jen pulled back her hand back, Luke saw a gash even deeper than his. Jen squeezed a few drops of blood and let them fall on the carpet. There, she said. Stunned, Luke backed out the door. Come back soon, farmer boy, Jen said. Luke turned and ran blindly, not even slowing down to creep alongside the barn. He went straight back to the door of his house, yanked it open, and let it bang shut behind him. Now, sitting at supper, he felt his heart pounding again as if he thought how dangerous that had been. Why hadn't he looked first? Why hadn't he crawled? He poked his fork into his potatoes, now gone cold and congealed. He watched Mother gathering up dirty dishes while Dad, Matthew, and Mark leaned back in their chairs, talking of grain yields. Jen had scared him. That was why. Seeing her cut her hand had terrified him. How could she do something like that for him when they just met? <laughs> Man. Alright, who's gonna stop there? <laughs>